Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jonathan. I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Waterloo. And today I kind of wanted to talk about the computer that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, which is my Surface Pro 7. As many of you guys might know, the Surface Pro line is one of Microsoft's key flagship product lines. And I've had a lot of experience using Surface Pros. I had the Surface Pro 4 when I was a master's student, and currently I'm using the Surface Pro 7 in my PhD program. I think the Surface Pro is a great device for any student because it is a two-in-one device, so it combines the utility of a traditional laptop, but it also includes the lightness and touch functionality of a tablet. And sometimes when you're a student, you do wanna have the flexibility of switching between the two. So in today's video, I kinda of wanna share my experience about using the Surface Pro 7 and why I think it's a great device for any type of student. And if you are considering buying a two-in-one laptop, especially since Black Friday is coming up and the holidays are coming up, I do think that you should give the Surface Pro lineup a try. In terms of the hardware, I do think that the Surface Pro 7 is pretty good. As you can probably see, it's super light super thin and you won't have any issues in terms of weight when you're carrying this in your backpack. Now the Surface Pro 7 does come with a headphone jack, it comes with a USB-C port and a USB-A port. When it comes to the screen quality, I do think it's pretty good. It has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. The only thing with the Surface Pro 7 is that, as you can see the bezels are pretty thick. It does make it a little easier to hold it as a tablet because you have room for your thumbs. But the Surface Pro 9 and the Surface Pro 8 does have a much more refined and updated look and I definitely prefer those devices compared to the Surface Pro 7. With my Surface Pro 7, I did purchase a couple of accessories. The first accessory that I purchased was the Alcantara keyboard. This keyboard simply acts as a folio and it connects magnetically at the bottom and then it just protects the device. It does have a very soft finish. The only issue that I have with this keyboard is that sometimes it does get a little bit dirty, especially where you rest your palms. And as you can see here, you can see a little bit of the dirt that kind of accumulated on this area and this area over here. But a little warm water and soap will definitely clean that up. When it comes to the typing experience of the keyboard, I am a pretty big fan. I do think the keyboard is pretty nice to type. It's very clicky. It has a good distance of travel. And actually the touchpad right here is actually pretty responsive. The next accessory that I purchased is actually the Surface Pen. And personally, I think that this pen is really good. It's pretty responsive. I do like how the tip is a little bit more softer and it has more friction with the screen compared to the Apple Pencil. And since I am a PhD student, I do read and annotate a lot of papers. So I do find myself using this pen a lot as I'm going through my papers and making little notes in the margins. In terms of the build quality, I do think the Surface Pro is well built. It has a magnesium body. It does feel high quality when you're holding it in your hands. And the thing that I really like about this device is actually the hinge. So as you can see here, the hinge gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of how flat you want to hold the device on the table. And that's really good because sometimes you just want to adjust the angle as you're, when you're using it as a laptop, but when you are taking notes on it, it kind of gives you the flexibility of how deep you want to lay this device flat. And I did use an iPad 2018 in the past. And one thing that I wasn't a big fan about the iPad is that depending on the folio that you're using, you used to only have two or three preset locations based on how you can lay the iPad on the table. So I think having this flexibility does play a big role um, and just making your experience with the device a lot more comfortable. Now, the thing that I love about the Surface Pro is that it combines both a tablet and traditional laptop together. I love how the Surface Pro lets you run full Windows on the machine. So I do have Windows 11 on here, and when I'm in my PhD program, I don't have to worry about whether or not a coding program that I'm using is not compatible with my device. So on this computer, I use programming languages like SAS, Stata to do my statistical analysis. I have Zotero on here to store all my papers. I can use Zotero to annotate my papers. I use Drawboard PDF to also annotate my papers as well. So it's nice just having a device where I don't have to worry about whether or not the program is gonna run or not. In terms of the specifications that I have for my particular device, I do have an i7 in here with 16 gigs of RAM and it's able to handle any type of productivity tasks that I throw at the machine. So reading papers, doing coding, that kind of stuff, Microsoft Office, that's totally fine on the device. And if you're a student that's just looking for a computer to handle those basic tasks, then I definitely think the Surface Pro is gonna be good for you. The parts where the Surface Pro really falls short, in my opinion, is gaming. So you are able to play very light games like TFT, League of Legends, CSGO, um, any kind of emulation games. You're able to run it on the Surface Pro 7, but when it comes to real games like maybe Call of Duty, 
then this is definitely not the machine for you. And this machine wasn't built for gamers at all. Another task that I've had trouble using this device for was actually video editing. So I've tried using DaVinci Resolve on the Surface Pro 7. And personally, it was a very buggy, very laggy experience. And that's why I don't do any of my video editing on this device. And I actually have a separate computer, the ASUS 2021 G14. I use that for all my gaming and video editing. But when it comes to school, I do prefer to bring the Surface Pro 7 to school just because it's so light and it's able to handle all the productivity tasks that I throw at it. Now, when it comes to using the touchscreen and the Surface Pen, I think the experience is pretty good. So I do read and annotate a lot of papers on this device. I'll open up the paper in Zotero, I'll open it through Drawboard PDF, and that's the software that I use to make all my annotations and just making little notes on the sides of the paper um, with the pen is actually really, really smooth. And I think it's actually a pretty good experience. Now compared to the Apple iPad and the Apple Pencil, I will admit that the writing experience on this device is not as good as the iPad. And I'm not really quite sure what it is. Maybe it's because the device for my Surface Pro only is 60 Hertz compared to the iPad Pro, which is 120 Hertz, which makes it a lot more smoother. And that's why I think when it comes to taking notes, it's totally fine on the Surface Pro, but maybe don't get the Surface Pro if you're into drawing. In addition to using the Surface Pen to read and annotate my papers, I do think the overall tablet experience on Windows 11 on the Surface Pro is pretty good. Personally, the best way to make the tablet experience a little bit more accessible is to increase the display size of all your icons. So currently I have it set at 225%. And I think with that size, it just makes things big enough for my fingers to touch. The touchscreen is pretty responsive. It's not as responsive as the iPad, but I think it's good enough for an overall experience. And then I do have all the apps that I use every single day on the taskbar, or I have it uh, in the start menu right here. The tablet experience is also pretty great. And sometimes you just want to use the Surface Pro tablet and not use the keyboard. Some of the use cases that I typically use it just like this is when I'm obviously lying on the couch or in my bed, watching some Netflix, swirling the web. When I'm cooking, sometimes I'll kind of have the Surface Pro right next to the oven and I'll watch a recipe video as I'm doing all the preparation for the food. Sometimes when I'm at the gym in my basement, I'll watch a TV show just like this and set it up right next to me while I'm working out. So I think having the flexibility of using this as a tablet in whatever use cases that you might have is something that's really, really nice. Overall, I think the Surface Pro is the perfect device for any type of college student, especially if you're a grad student or a PhD student. Because the Surface Pro runs Windows 11, you don't have to worry about not having a device that's incompatible with any type of statistical or coding software that you're using. Plus the tablet experience allows you to remove the keyboard and allows you to use the Surface Pen to read and annotate your papers in a way that's much more immersive than reading a paper just on a laptop. Finally, it's a very lightweight device that will fit nicely into your backpack and you won't feel the weight on your shoulders. If you are considering buying a Surface Pro, there are usually tons of used ones on Facebook Marketplace, especially in my region in Toronto. I will say if you are going for an older device like a Surface Pro 7 or something earlier, it is a lot cheaper to get it used. And if you don't mind the thick bezels, then I think overall this can be a really good computing device to meet all your student productivity needs. Sometimes I think Surface Pro devices do get a little bit of hate on the internet because they are pretty expensive and everybody just loves Apple products, especially the M2 MacBook Air and the iPad. But if you're looking for a Windows-based device that has the flexibility of both a computer and a tablet, then I definitely think the Surface Pro device is the way to go. I've been using these guys since the Surface Pro 4. I've been using it since my master's degree and in my PhD program. And I think overall, when it comes to getting your work done, this is the right way to do it. So hopefully you guys found that video informative. Hopefully I communicated to you guys why I think the Surface Pro device is great. And I'm gonna continue using my Surface Pro 7 for the remainder of my PhD program. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.